bastards. Why don't the press leave Jacko alone? They act like it's a crime to be different. Hey, Bob Severinsen's leaving town. You changing the subject? I'm trying. It's a bright, shiny diamond of the world out there, Ed. Wouldn't hurt us to consider a facet outside our own community every once in a while. Jacko, that's a facet you're going to consider? Small facet, granted, but a oddly fascinating one nonetheless. Hey. It says here Severinsen's going to sell his horses. Jacko likes horses. He even has his own zoo. Racehorses. Don't tell me you forgot the dream. Dream of many dreams, Ed. The dream we've shared since that crisp autumn day when our fathers first took it to the Jasper Park racetrack to see our very first horse race. Still fuzzy. The dream, Mike. The dream of owning a racehorse. The dream of getting our picture taken in the winter circle with a bottle of champagne and a wreath of flowers around our neck. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that dream. Horse races, Mike. Horse racing, the sport of kings. Actually, pro is the sport of kings. This is tennis. Oh, boy. Hold on, we don't have much time here. It says they're going to auction the horses tomorrow. Are you really, really serious about this? Absolutely, I'm serious. Chance to live the dream, my friend. I got a horse right here. The name is Paul Revere. Come on, Mike. No, thank you. And here's a guy that says, if the weather's clear, you gonna leave me hanging here? If you're comfortable leaving me hanging here. Can do. Can do. Can do. Surely. Oh, listen, if anyone calls, it's going to be busy for a while. i got to see Amanda on the horse. You'll find them sparkling clean, sanitized for your protection. What? Bathrooms. What? Hmm? Oh, no, no, surely, I don't have to, I mean, I'm not, I, I quite literally need to see a man about a horse. Shall I slip the phone messages under the door? That'd be very nice, thank you. One more time. Tell me I'm not doing something stupid here. Do I get to be in the winter circle with you when you win? Holding the champagne. Then you're not doing anything stupid. Thanks. Come on, I'll drop you at school. It's just a number. Well, two numbers, verbal and math, adding up to one. Can we please talk about something else? That bad, huh? Thank you, Shirley. It's not my fault. SATs are culturally biased. Everyone knows that. Yeah, in your favor. Road rallies to cars, regattas to... What? Supposed to know this? What do I look like? Someone who goes for regattas? I look like P. Diddy? Boat, dumbass. The answer is boat. And you don't have to be Puff Daddy, you just have to read. Oh, well, excuse me, Mr. Genius. Looks like you got all the answers, huh? What is this? Well, you better be choking. Let me tell you something. Cause your boy losing weight, don't give you the license to come in here with that bulimic crap. Pie go in your mouth, pie stay in your mouth. You might get man. You try it. Yeah, and consider yourself fortunate I don't sue this establishment for offending my delicate palate with that putrid pie. Delicate palate, putrid pie. Excellent verbal skills. Must have been the math that did you in. Oh. Putrid, you say? Hey, Shirley! Why ain't nothing wrong with that pie? Actually, putrid is an apt description. I'm merely enjoying the pleasing soupy texture. Oh, little Miss Pie Lady got some explaining to do. Oh man, you should have said splaining like Ricky Ricardo, man. People love that. I'm humbled. You spend your whole life wondering where certain expressions come from. And one day you're blessed and you see with your own eyes. Pee like a racehorse. A different expression of mine. I know. Come on, let's keep moving. We're looking for a filly. How long have you been a lunch lady here at Stuckyville High? 23 years. 23 years? Then surely you must know what kind of meat they use in those... Warren? What you doing? Like Keeping my mind occupied so I don't slip into a cesspool of self pity you, you know, Warren, I'm teaching an SAT prep class. You can take them again. <laughs> what makes you think I'm bummed about the SATs? Well, Ms. Burton told me how you did. Oh, God, my life is over. Sucks. One stupid test and a roadkill on the highway of natural selection. 
You realize my entire future now is nothing more than a barren expanse of minimum wage jobs and reality TV, all leading to my eventual extinction. Warren, you... Warren, listen to me. You're going to take the test again, and you're going to be fine. Fine? I got news for you, Miss Festy. Fine doesn't exactly cut it in today's competitive collegiate environment. You have to be, like, exceptional. And you are. At what? Something. I'm sure that there's something that interests you, something you enjoy. Let your avocation be your vocation. Hey, teachers have all the good slogans. Yeah, perhaps something in the sex trade. Or not. What about TV? You seem to enjoy that. Uh, sure, but, you know, Stuckyville isn't exactly Vancouver. That's where they shoot most TV shows. It's in Canada. Not all of them. Do you know who Michael Essany is? Uh, yeah, like the chubby Asian kid who, like, does an awesome Christopher Walken impression. No, Michael Essany has his own talk show. He tapes it in his parents' living room in Indiana. It started when he was 14. Probably afraid to come out. My point is that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. You just have to dare to dream. Dare to dream. That was cliched, wasn't it? Good horsey. Good horse. I think I like this one. Mike, what are hawks? I'm supposed to check the hawks. The doctor, I'm not a veterinarian. Yeah, we gotta check the hawks, though. I think hawks has got something to do with either balance or intelligence. Or... Wanna go back and ask me that again? Ask you what? You know about the hawks? Mike, what are hawks? Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a veterinarian. I was doing bones from Star Trek. Probably not worth going back for. Probably not. Dr. Burton, is that you? Hey, Mr. Severson, how are you? You remember my friend, Ed? Of course. Hey, Mr. Severson, good to see you. So, the market for a horse? We are, as a matter of fact. Look no farther. Well, really? This right here? She's special. In fact, little effort, she could be ready to run this week. This week? Wow, that, that, that'd be fantastic. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Severson. OK, take care, Mr. Severson. Did you hear that? Yeah. We should ask him what a hawk is. Forget hawks. We, we got ourselves a horse. Yeah, as long as nobody outbids us. Miss Jenny Fair, Miss Jenny Fair. Wait a minute, hold it. I know you're not going there selling them three itty bitty pies. Not after you told me you only sell them in what? Increments of 100? I make exceptions for some of my preferred customers. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Little dig, little dig. I know. You're just trying to say, oh, Eli's not a preferred customer. I know. What can I do for you, Eli? You could take back those pies you sold me. Now, why in the world would I want to do that? Because they all went bad. Of course they went bad. They're pies, Eli. Pies don't last forever. Yeah, but you sold me 100 pies. You told me, freeze them, throw them, sell them. As long as you do it by the expiration date. Hey, wait, 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 hold up. Expiration date? You didn't say anything about no expiration date. It's right there, on every box. OK, I'll tell you what. You got two choices. One, you take back the pies, or two, you face the unmitigated wrath of Eli Cartwright Goggins III. I'm sorry. A competent salesman would have had those pies sold by now. OK, get ready to face the unmitigated wrath of Eli Cartwright Goggins III, Chody. Wait, did you hear what I said? Yo, you about to face some wrath. You, you want, it's some serious wrath. Some serious wrath. My first guest tonight is one of the most inventive and hilarious performers in recent memory. Good tonight, God. How did this guy get his own show? Oh, I think he's funny. The incomparable Mr. Tom Green. The incomparable Mr. Tom Green. Because I've put so much into this, I have not had time to do most ordinary things. The ordinary things? Like kissing a girl. It's a shtick. It's good shtick. It's not like I've got uh, a lot of offers for dates and things. <laughs> oh, he's so lame. Now, if he could do this, imagine what I could do. Remember this night, Mark. This is the night that I warn Cheswick she'll dare to dream. Okay, what are you babbling about? Miss Vesty said I could accomplish anything I put my mind to. She's absolutely right. This can't be going anyplace good. Warren! You missed my SAT prep class. You're a genius. Oh, what? Ah. 
My Gillespie has shown me my destiny. Oh, you saw it. I'm glad. I am going to be the voice of my generation. It's quite some destiny. <laughs> and it's less daunting if I take it in five-year chunks. So first I get my own talk show, then, you know, work on my stand-up act, take a few film roles, of course. And then I'm going to have to form my own production company so I can develop my own material, then introduce my own perfume line, and uh, soon I'm a personality. Sounds like you're going to be a very busy young man. Still expect to see you at my next SAT prep class. Am I going to retake the SATs? Why not? Why in the world would I do that? I don't know. Maybe because you want to get into a better college. That puts me four years behind schedule. I'm not going to college. <laughs> Come here, you. Oh. <laughs> really want this horse, Mike. 100% with you, buddy. But they're also asking me a limit on what we're willing to spend. Right. So give me a number. Mm, 3,000. Three, you can't buy a horse for $3,000. All right, 3,500. 3,500. These are thoroughbred race horses, Mike. So what, then? 4,000? We'll 4,000. Are you delirious? 4,000 dollars will be laughed out of the auction. How much do you want to spend, Ed? 4,500? All right, not a penny more. Agreed. Uh, Which store are you for the hat? 2795. No oh, way. 8,000 going twice. Sold to this young lady for $8,000, buyer number 10. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next lot number is lot number four. Two-year-old, beautiful fish. There she is, Mike. And That's a horse. She is gorgeous. Yeah, I really think I should be the one controlling the paddle. Why? All right, how much? I'm a doctor. Let's start at $5,000. I have a bit of $5,000 now. 5000 dollars 55 55 55 I have there. 55 and $6,000 there. $6,000. I have 6500 now. 6500 give me the 7 7 I got $7,000 there. $7,000 now. Give me the 75 I got $75 for a man and a quarter. Right? 75 give me the 8 Give me the 8 Give me the 8 I got 75 now. 8000 I have now. Give me 85 85 85 85 I have a man and a quarter. Right? 9000 Michael, we think we should go to 10000 What are you, crazy? No, I'm asking you to give me authorization to bid. No. Come authorize me. No. Authorize me. Yeah, okay. $10,000. I got $10,000 in the back. Thank you. New bidder. $10,000. Yeah. Ten thousand. Give me the 10.5. Give me the 10.5. I have 10,000. I have 10.5 men in quarter rate. 11,000. I have my new friend. I'm not crazy for 11. No, no, you did. It was a blanket authorization. No, there was no blue. There was no, no blanket. It was blanket. You blanketed it. Now give me 12,000. 12? 12,000 to my friend in the back. Hey, you've got berserk. I'm not letting the man in quarter rate take our horse. 12,5. I have now man in the quarter rate. 12,5. Now give me 13,000. I got 13. I got 13,000. We can get it. We can get this horse. 13,000 dollars. I have 13,000 going once. I got 13.5 from the man in quarter right. 13.5 now. Hey, what are you doing? Five, Saving us a lot of money. Mike, we can take this guy. What are your senses at? You're being ridiculous. 20, 000, 13, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. 13.5 going once. 13.5 going twice. Right here. <clears throat> I got $14,000. $14,000 going once, twice. Sold for $14,000. Ah, <laughs> still like being smirked at by a man wearing quarter right. Hi, Nance. Hey, Miles, you want to see me? Yeah, come on in. Listen, Warren Cheswick's parents called me. Me too. Oh, God. They're not happy. They said that you told him not to go to college? That is so nuts. I told Warren about a kid who's got his own talk show, and the next thing I know, Warren tells me that he doesn't want to go to college. I, that's just Warren being Warren. Well, he's already gone to the local public access station. He's shooting a pilot with them. But don't worry. I, I've got it covered. He will retake the SATs. He will go to college. All right. Great. All right. Welcome back. Uh, for those of you just joining us, get a life. <laughs> How's my makeup? My you look like George Hamilton's little sister. My first guest is someone all of you fans of rental shoes will surely recognize. He's the manager of Stucky Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Phil. Warren, we need to talk. You're a tea security. Well, look at this. A, a surprise walk-on guest. Uh, wonderful. This is Stuckyville High's own Miss Carol Bessie. Warren, can we uh, turn the cameras off, please? I'm oh, sorry. We can't. We're live to tape. It's more spontaneous this way, right? Oh, well, in that case, fine. I've got something to promote. Oh, terrific! <laughs> Wonderful. A uh, film? A book? What? College, Warren. You need to go to college. Oh, I disagree. Why? <laughs> well, college isn't for everybody. You know, for some people, like uh, LeBron James and me, it's simply an unnecessary detour on the road to fame and fortune. <laughs> really? I, w I wasn't aware that you've been drafted by the NBA. <laughs> oh, easy there, Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Why don't you leave the jokes to me? <laughs> But seriously, no, college isn't something that I, that I need, you know. I know what I want to do with my life, and, uh, well, clearly I'm doing it. A, a talk show? Yes. It's a stepping stone. Like you said, 
Dare to dream. Yes, but isn't it possible to dream and still go to college? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. What do you mean? Well, you know, your dream was to be a writer, right? You know, Warren, this isn't about me. Yeah, you went to college, got a degree in education. Huh, you became a teacher. I did. I became a teacher, but that doesn't mean I can't also write. Yeah, but have you? I mean, have you really? What if instead of spending those four years on, like, sorority socials, intramural sports, you know, math, foreign languages, lab experiments, what if you would spend them totally focused on writing? Totally focused on the one thing that mattered most to you. I got bumped for this crap. I mean, maybe I'll suck at this talk show thing. I don't know, but I'm not going to play it safe. I'm not going to look back ten years from now and, you know, wonder what would have happened if I had just given it everything I had. Think of the name. Carol and Ed and Nancy and Mike. I like it. Yeah, me too. I just think how great it'll sound at the track. And down yeah. the stretch they come with Carol and Ed and Nancy and Mike gonna lead by two lengths. That's what we want to do now. Well, we can't keep her here. No, I guess not. Hi. Three, please. So, had it go with Warren. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but he actually makes a compelling argument. Yeah, but you being older and wiser made a more compelling one. Uh, actually, no. no. Carol. I should have come with you. What? Look, he knows what he wants to do. How many college kids can say that? College kids that have degrees to fall back on? He can go later. He doesn't need a degree right now. Okay, Carol, stop. You're seeing the world through Warren's eyes and you're starting to scare me. Yeah, you scare me a little bit, too. I'm just saying... Can we allow that college isn't the only option? The Cheswicks are counting on me. I told them I would handle this. I can't make Warren go to college. Yeah, well, doesn't seem like you tried too hard. I can't believe it. They're both intelligent, well-educated women. How could they not even entertain another option? They think I've lost my mind. At least my mind is open, right? Right. I thought a teacher's job was to encourage her students to think, problem solve, prepare for the rest of their lives, not just for college. Who's to say that Warren will make an excellent talk show host? Did you know that Peter Jennings is a high school dropout? Ed. Yeah? You're not listening to me. Peter Jennings, I heard every word. Yeah, but you're not saying much. Not much to say. It looks like you're pretty much covered. Don't you agree? Yeah, of course. Do you? Or are you just not disagreeing? Hey, Ed! Excuse me. What's the matter? Are you okay? I don't know. She seems, she seems kind of restless. Huh. Maybe she's got to take a leak. Yeah, that's it. Just let it go, baby. What? No, what? no Mike! What? She got a drain right there. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want a horse believing itself in my garage. So do we do. So I think Carol's making a big mistake with Warren. Oh, the college thing? Yeah, the whole college thing, you know? I want to tell her that she's wrong, but I know that's the last thing she wants to hear. So lie to her. Can't lie to her. Uh, anyway. What kind of relationship is that? One that lasts. Not going to do it. Uh, I hope you're ready to duck and cover. Speaking of which, looks like this is it. We're going to need a bigger bag. Carol, what's up? The Cheswicks are in my office. They're oh. requesting a meeting with the school board. Oh, that's crazy. I hope you told them that I didn't no, have... I told them that you would talk to Warren and you would tell him that he needs to go to college. Let's go. When you look at me, what do you see? A concerned father. Wrong. You have before you a tree trunk with branches. I don't understand. Well, you, you know the expression, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? Of course. Well, I'm the tree. Warren is the apple. Huh. You see, I don't blame Warren for who he is. It's not his fault. His limitations, they're mine. His mediocrities, mine also. If left to his own devices, Warren would have little chance of becoming anything more than another version of me. A tree. Mrs. Cheswick? You can't possibly feel the same way. Okay. Perhaps you should tell Miss Vessie what she can do to help you. Oh, thank you. 
We think it's important for Warren to go to college. It's his best hope for becoming more than simply the sum of his parents. Okay. Well, since you spoke with him, he's become convinced that he's better off with this little circus act that he's trying to put together. <laughs> it's a TV show. Like there's a difference. <laughs> okay, I think that this is just a simple misunderstanding. Miss Vessie, why don't you have a talk with Warren? Tell him that you believe college is the best thing for him. He'll listen to you, Miss Vessie. You have no idea how much he respects your opinion. <laughs> You're right. Warren would listen to me. And that's why I can't do it. I'm sorry, it's just not my decision to make. It's Warren's. So sorry. Thank you for taking the time to see us. We'll see you at the school board hearing. Would it really have been that hard to give them what they wanted? No. I know it would have been easy, but the easy thing isn't always the right thing. Well, I hope that that's true because what I have to do isn't easy at all. What's that? Carol, you're suspended. Just go home until the school board decides how to handle this. You're not serious. <sighs> so, what do you think? I think it's gonna be stupid. Come on, it'll be fun. No, it won't be stupid. It'll be stupid fun. Come on, don't you want to see what it's like? <laughs> hey, Har Harley. Uh, we were just, uh, <clears throat> we were just uh, checking track conditions. It's going. Oh, well, we we're, we're hoping on sticking around. That's cool. Going. It's the technical term for track condition. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, I was just, I was playing with you. I wasn't playing, I admit it. Please look at it now. Got your receipts. Thanks. We just... $400 for horseshoes? That's ridiculous, man. What are they? What's this expensive shoe? Prada? Yeah, what are they? Prada horseshoes? No, they're not Prada horseshoes, Mike. All right, the shoes, a horse needs shoes, all right? Unlike a massage, $200 for a massage? Why in the world would you get our horse a massage? Race horses are fine to athlete, Ed. Athletes require the occasional massage. It's, it's no secret. Leon Spinks had a number of massages. Leon Spinks? Leon Spinks. I don't want to argue with you, Mike, okay? We're partners, though. We should just at least discuss how we're going to spend the money before we actually spend it. Yeah. What else we got? We got 160 for tape and wrappings, 580 for stall fees, 650 for training, 375 for feed, vitamins, and injections. I haven't hired a jockey yet. Who knows how much that'll be? How come I never see your checkbook? Nancy keeps it. Good afternoon, my good sir. I'm selling Eli's pies. These are the most delicious pies on both sides of the Mississippi. Sorry, I have all the pies I need. Wait, sir, may I ask you who you get your pies from? A woman named Jennifer Young. Jennifer Young. Beautiful woman. Terrific lady. You know something? I, I can't even compete with that. Mm, her pies are amazing. Yes, they are. She should rebound well. Rebound? Rebound from what? You didn't hear? Hear about what? The incident. What incident? You didn't hear about the incident. You know what, I don't even want to talk because I don't want to put that woman business in the street like that. You just tell me what you're talking about. Our pies killed the man. What? Easy! 
I'm just trying to tell you what happened, man. Yeah. Father of seven, he was a dentist. Very beloved in the community. Terrible. How? Well, it was something about the blueberries in her pies. It's some type of bacteria. It was strepta loca, coca, loca, coca, loca, strepta, coca, coca, loca, something like that. I don't know. Well, she should be fine, because I don't think the family's trying to sue her. Have a good day, sir. Uh, wait a minute. Let me try one of your pies. Isn't this great? Yeah. Yeah, is this the way you pictured it, your dream? Yeah, yeah. Pre pretty much, pretty much. Of course, in a dream, I pictured it without the smell of vision. <laughs> That's a whole new dimension, you know? <laughs> yeah. So this, this is a nice surprise. You at the track in the middle of the day? Yeah, I got suspended today. What? Mm. Why? Because the Cheswicks went over Molly's head and they requested a hearing at the school board. Requested a hearing at the school board? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Hey, listen, I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If there's any... Well, I know a good lawyer if you need one. Thank you. I hope it doesn't have to come to that, though. There's still a good chance it could all go away. Why do you say that? Well, Warren still has to show his pilot to the people at the public access station, and if they don't go for it, his bubble could burst right there. That would certainly make it easier. Easier? For you, then Warren could go to college. But I want Warren to have what he wants, just like I want for you. Right. Right. Am I keeping you from something? What? No, I was just gonna go get Mike, because we're supposed to go back to Stucky Bowl and interview some jockeys, but it's okay, he can do it without me. Go ahead, I'm fine. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? I can... Okay. No, Phil. But Bosco... You're too heavy. No, I'm actually deceptively light. I have the bone structure of a bird. What? Hollow bones. No. Sure! Lee, thanks for putting the word up. Send the jockeys in one at a time. Will do. Oh, and Ed, I'm also a horse whisperer. Never hired a jockey before. What do we ask him? I have the first mini to fantasy. to see you. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, come on in, Mr. Diaz. Have a seat. So how much do you weigh? Yeah, how much, how much do you weigh? 809 pounds. 109. 109. Thanks for coming in. We'll be in touch. Miss Bassey! Hey! Sorry about you. So glad I found you. Hi, Mrs. Brand. How are you? Nice hearing. You. Thank you. What is it? Listen, I'm sorry about what happened, but don't worry. All is going to be forgiven as soon as my parents hear the news. What news? They're putting me on the air. <laughs> my own talk show. <laughs> Can you believe that? Phase one of the five-year plan complete. Dare to dream. Thank you, Miss Fessy. Oh, shoot. I gotta go. I have a show to do. <laughs> Excuse me. No. Just once, I wish someone would leave the guidance office like that. What? What? Excuse me. Excuse me. Watch your feet. Watch your... Back up, man. Thank you. Excuse me. All right, with all this touching, huh? Okay, easy. Eli? Yeah, that's me. I'm Simon. My cousin Doug died last year. Hunting accident. Oh, damn. I'm sorry to hear that, Simon. Life's a bitch sometime, man. Oh, what size you at? Doug and I had a pretty ugly fight the day he died. I need to know that he's okay. That he doesn't blame me. You bought a 10. I I've never done this before. Do I sit down? Do you need to touch me? If it helps, I have Doug's hunting cap. All right. You crazy. 
You look like Jeffrey Dahmer in the eyes, and you're freaking me out. Now, if you don't get out of here, I'm gonna call for some backup. Okay, that's something you ain't hearing. Something you ain't, something you miss. You don't wanna move? I'll run you, get out of here before I run you right over. I ain't playing with you. What the hell? Eli? Eli Goggins. Yes, that's me. When I was a little girl, I had a dog named Wuzzy. I need to know if he's in a happy place. Ma'am, listen, I don't know nothing about no dog named Wuzzy. I don't know what's going on, but you need to get out of here because I got a business to run. I'm not playing. I get to getting. Go. Go right now. Everybody, get. Get. You secretive, psychic son of a bitch. I don't know whether to hit you or hug you. Oh, what the hell? Get over it. <laughs> Mac, get off me. Listen, I had a, a great aunt who passed over back in Aught One, and I would like to acknowledge her. And I was wondering if you could somehow get her to tell you where she hid my collection of Archie comics because they are worth a small fortune and I would be more than happy to split any of the proceeds. Should we get... Shirley, what is going on? You see dead people. Look, that wasn't funny four years ago when the movie first came out and it ain't getting any funnier with age. What movie? Appearing at Stucky Bull. Crossing over with Eli Cartwright Goggins the third. Marvel as Eli gives voice to those who pass beyond into the next world. Complimentary pie will be served. I should probably order more pie. Where'd you get this? I'm gonna post it all over town. Okay. I see. Miss Jennifer strikes back. To play that game. So we found our jockey. Really? Yeah, found our jockey, so we're all set for the big race tomorrow. It's great. Wish I could be there. You getting ready for the hearing? Yep. Yeah, listen, Carol, if there's anything I can do, seriously, I'd be glad no, to... No, I don't think there is, since you obviously think I'm out of my mind. I, I don't think you're out of your mind. I, I, just, I, I just happen to think that if Warren... Why don't you just admit it? You think I'm wrong about Warren, don't you? Yes, I do. You disappoint me, Ed. Why? I disappoint? Why? Because I disagree with you? Aren't I entitled to my own opinion? No. No, what disappoints me is you walk around like Mr. Follow Your Dream because you wasted some money on a stupid horse when, when it comes right down to it, you're really not that way at all. Yeah, yes, I am. I just happen to think that Warren can follow his dream and still have something else to fall back on. No, that's just it. Don't you see, if you follow your dream, you can't leave yourself something to fall back on. If you leave yourself something to fall back on, you know what you end up doing? Falling back on it. Giving up, just like I did. Carol. No, you're entitled to your opinion. Go walk your horse. Lord have mercy. We done found Jennifer. Everybody, you heard me. You can stop looking now. Praise the Lord. Child, you had us mighty worried. You think this is funny? No, funny is telling people I talk with dead folk. Funny is disrupting my place of business. This right here, this is hilarious. Listen to me good, Eli. I'm not going anywhere. Whatever you dish out is coming right back at you with interest. Got it? It's like that? You know, if my life wasn't already a 24-7 obligation, I'd take you up on it. But it is, so now we got to come to some type of compromise. What did you have in mind? Just give me back my refund on my pies like I asked you in the first place. I'll give you a refund on half the pies. All right, I'll take half, but you're going to make me a preferred customer, and I'm not buying pies in increments of 100. Deal. See you around, Eli. That you will, Jennifer. That you will. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Isn't that what Casey Kasem says? Yes, sir. Every week on the radio and millions of high school students listen to him. Yet, he's not on trial here today. Miss Vesey, no one is on trial here today. I, this is merely a theory. Now, I believe Miss Vesey's right. Mr. Stevens, thank you for recognizing me, your boardship. I wasn't recognized. I recognize you, of course, because I know you, but I wasn't... Nonetheless, like I say, I agree with Ms. Bessie. No one's on trial here today, and yet she's being judged just the same, isn't she? Why, her very judgment 
is being judged and what's her crime. Every point. Inspiring people to follow their dream, to reach for the stars, to believe the sky's the limit, or if they choose to be an astronaut, to believe the sky's not the limit, to motivate someone to achieve his or her potential. Isn't that what a teacher is supposed to do? Peter Jennings, the respected anchor, was a high school dropout. I don't know, I don't know if you know that. I knew he was Canadian. Writers such as Ernest Hemingway, and Charles Dickens, Jane Austen, well, they never went to college. People such as Walt Disney, Eddie Murphy, Wayne Newton, didn't go to college. Nine U.S. presidents didn't go to college. Now, granted, these are exceptional people. Wayne Newton. But who's to say that Warren Cheswick won't be an exceptional talk show host? Folks, the truth of the matter right now is no one knows what the future holds for Warren Cheswick. Right now, it's just a dream. And if dreams are safe, then, well, they're not really dreams, are they? They're plans. Well, Carol Vesey doesn't want to stand in the way of a dream. I would hope that you don't either. Thank you for listening to me. You missed your race. We hurry to the goat. We can still catch it on TV. Thank you for coming here. You're welcome. Welcome to the 79th running of the Jasper Town Stakes. Hey guys! The horses are jumping hey. the bill. And the you guys are just in time. The horses are approaching the post. Well, what are you doing here? It's the only place in town that carries the races? No, I know that, but why aren't you at the track? Yeah, we're partners. If you're not at the track, neither am I. We'll run down this field beat. Thanks, brother. Carol and Ed and Nancy and Mike with Jockey Hey, there she is. Carol and Ed and Nancy and Mike. What? Hey, she looks, she looks great, right? She looks great, doesn't she? Yeah, the, the jockey looks kind of mean. Brendan and Trevor, written by champion yeah. jockey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Satan. I tell you, Mike, this whole week is not quite what I expected. The whole horse ownership thing, you know, all the time, all the money. A lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. I'm telling you, being here right now with you watching this race, it's all been worth it. Amen, brother. Good luck. And they're off. Oh, and it's a clean start. A fast start for Lil Momo. Hope to set a charge to the curve. And Lil Momo grabbed oh, the lead. Oh, and in oh, oh, position oh, are Dia oh, Rebellious oh, and Lil oh, Momo. Oh, Nancy and Mike fading. She drops to the back Grab while Lil Momo run. opens it up. And Lil Momo oh, leads the charge while Golden Gate catches Carol and Ed Nancy and Mike. Run Carol and Ed Nancy and Mike can oh, see them all. What is that? And Lil Momo leads the charge. Why is Carol and Ed Nancy Mike stopping? She's not stopping. All the other horses are actually running. Passes Carol and Ed Nancy and Mike dropping her in the last place. But wait, Carol and Ed, Nancy and Mike is making a move on the back rail. She's gaining momentum. Oh, look at that horse run. She's flying down the track, ladies and gentlemen. Carol and Ed, Nancy and Mike is passing Golden Gale. She's passing Brendan and Trevor. She's reeling in the leaders along the far rail. And ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a horse race. Come on! And down the stretch they come. Who once had this race shut to bits is in a fight for her life, and it's anyone's race as they flash to the finish, all thundering hooves and cracking whips, and at the finish is Lil Momo, the rebellious and noble, the noble win play show. Carol and Ed and Nancy and Mike finish in six out of seven. Too bad. Next. Let's go. Sell the horse. Sell the horse. Carol! Great news. Hardly found a buyer for Carol and Ed and Nancy and Mike, so we... What have we here? Ed Stevens, would you kindly step into the winner's circle and collect your prize? We came in sixth. Do you want your prize or don't you? Definitely want the prize. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. You have no idea how much that meant to me. Listen, I might not always agree with you, but I will always be with you. And I'm sorry it took me so long to figure that out. Mm. Well, it's how you finish the race that matters. And that makes you winner. <laughs> mm. Almost forgot, one show's on. Wait. What about my prize? But you gotta read the flowers. You expecting something more? Yeah, I thought. <laughs> my 
apologies to those of you joining us this evening to see Roger Lodge, the ubiquitous host of TV's Blind Date. Uh, I've been informed that Mr. Lodge will not be with us this evening. Seems I've become a victim of the late-night talk show booking wars. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming my first guest. He's been kind enough to step in on very short notice. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fist. Ah, hello, Warren. Uh, oh. Thank you for having me. Mr. Fist, Please, thank you for being He's here. He's doing senior winces. Uh, I understand that you're going to Can you even do senior winces? Yeah, Does he even know what senior winces is? Good question. <clears throat> hey, girls, gather around. Listen to what I'm putting down. Hey, babe, I'm your handy man. This is a train wreck. It's horrible. I'm done. It's true, but like you said, it's how you finish the race. And for Warren, <laughs> thankfully... This is just the start. Yes, please, you try to make hell with me again. Oh. He gets so randy when he sings this song. Anyway, I'm all better now. Uh, you feeling okay? You want to finish the song? Yes, I think I might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All better? Feeling better? Yes, thank you. Please leave me alone. <laughs> Easy there, buddy. <laughs> Remember, it's my show. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, yes! God, Mr. Fist, you know what? <laughs> Eleven thousand. I have to my new friend. I'm not crazy for eleven. No, no, you did. It was a blanket authorization. No, there was no blue. No, no blanket, blanket authorization. authorization. You blanketed it. Now give me twelve thousand. Twelve. Twelve thousand to my friend in the back. Hey, you got berserk. I'm not letting the man in corduroy five. take our horse. Twelve five. I have now a man in corduroy. Twelve five. Now give me thirteen thousand. I got thirteen. I got thirteen. What do you do? We can get it. We can get this horse. Thirteen thousand dollars. I have thirteen thousand going once. I got thirteen five from the man in corduroy. Thirteen five. five now. Hey, what are you doing? You're saving us a lot of money. Mike, we can take this guy. Out of your senses it. You're being ridiculous. Twenty thousand. Thirteen five. You're, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Thirteen five going once. Thirteen five going twice. Right here. <clears throat> I got fourteen thousand dollars. Fourteen thousand dollars going once, twice. Sold for fourteen thousand oh, dollars. Still like being smirked at by a man wearing corduroy. Hi, Nance. Hey, Miles, you want to see me? Yeah, come on in. Listen, Warren Cheswick's parents called me. Me too. Oh, God. They're not happy. They said that you told him not to go to college? That is so nuts. I told Warren about a kid who's got his own talk show, and the next thing I know, Warren tells me that he doesn't want to go to college. I, that's just Warren being Warren. Well, he's already gone to the local public access station. He's shooting a pilot with them. But don't worry. I, I've got it covered. He will retake the SATs. He will go to college. All right. Great. All right. Welcome back. Uh, for those of you just joining us, get a life. <laughs> How's my makeup? Seriously, my you look like George uh, Hamilton's little sister. Evil after dark. My first guest is someone all of you fans of rental shoes will surely recognize. He's the manager of Stucky Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Phil. Lauren, we need to talk. You're a T security. Well, look at this, a, a surprise walk-on guest. Uh, wonderful, it, this is Stuckyville High's own Miss Carol Bessie. Lauren, can we uh, turn the cameras off, please? No, sorry, we can't, we're live to tape. It's more spontaneous this way, right? Oh, well, in that case, fine, I've got something to promote. Oh, terrific. Wonderful, a uh, film, a book, what? College, Warren, you need to go to college. Oh, I disagree. Why? Well, college isn't for everybody. You know, for some people, like uh, LeBron James and me, it's simply an unnecessary detour on the road to fame and fortune. Really? I, w I wasn't aware that you've been drafted by the NBA. Oh, easy there, Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Why don't you leave the jokes to me? <laughs> but seriously, no, college isn't something that I, that I need, you know. I know what I want to do with my life, and, uh, well, clearly I'm doing it. A, a talk show? Yes. That's a stepping stone. Like you said, 
Dare to dream. Yes, but isn't it possible to dream and still go to college? Uh, what? I'm supposed to know this? What do I look like? Someone who goes to regattas? I look like P. Diddy? Boat, dumbass. The answer is boat. And you don't have to be Puff Daddy, you just have to read. Oh, well, excuse me, Mr. Genius. Looks like you got all the answers, huh? Uh, what is this? Well, you better be choking. Let me tell you something, cause your boy losing weight don't give you the license to come in here with that bulimic crap. Pie go in your mouth, pie stay in your mouth. You might guess, my man, you try it. And you know, consider yourself fortunate I don't sue this establishment for offending my delicate palate with that putrid pie. Delicate palate, putrid pie, excellent verbal skills. Must have been the math that did you in. Oh. Putrid, you say? Hey, Shirley! Ain't nothing wrong with that pie. Actually, putrid is an apt description. I'm merely enjoying the pleasing soupy texture. Oh, little Miss Pie Lady got some explaining to do. Oh man, you should have said explaining like Ricky Ricardo, man. People love that. I'm humbled. You spend your whole life wondering where certain expressions come from. And one day you're blessed and you see with your own eyes. Pee like a racehorse. A different expression of mine. I know. Come on, let's keep moving. We're looking for a filly. How long have you been a lunch lady here at Stuckyville High? 23 years. 23 years? Then surely you must know what kind of meat they use in those... Warren? What you doing? Keeping my mind occupied so I don't slip into a cesspool of self surely you, must... you know, Warren, I'm teaching an SAT prep class. You can take them again. What makes you think I'm bummed about the SATs? Well... Ms. Burton told me how you did. Oh, God, my life is over. Sucks. It's so unfair. One stupid test and a roadkill on the highway of natural selection. You realize my entire future now is nothing more than a barren expanse of minimum wage jobs and reality TV, all leading to my eventual extinction. Warren, you... Warren, listen to me. You're going to take the test again, and you're going to be fine. Fine? I got news for you, Miss Festy. Fine doesn't exactly cut it in today's competitive collegiate environment. You have to be, like, exceptional. And you are. At what? Something. I'm sure that there's something that interests you, something you enjoy. Let your avocation be your vocation. And teachers have all the good slogans. Yeah, perhaps something in the sex trade. Or not. What about TV? You seem to enjoy that. Uh, sure, but, you know, Stuckyville isn't exactly Vancouver. That's where they shoot most TV shows. It's in Canada. Not all of them. Do you know who Michael Essany is? Uh, yeah, like the chubby Asian kid who like does an awesome Christopher Walken impression. No, Michael Essany has his own talk show. He tapes it in his parents' living room in Indiana. It started when he was 14. Probably afraid to come out. My point is that you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. You just have to dare to dream. Dare to dream. That was cliched, wasn't it? Good horsey. Good horse. I think I like this one. Mike, what are hawks? I'm supposed to check the hawks. The doctor, not a veterinarian. Yeah, we gotta check the hawks, though. I think hawks has got something to do with either balance or intelligence. Or... Wanna go back and ask me that again? Ask you what? You know about the hawks? Mike, what are hawks? Damn it, I'm a doctor, not a veterinarian. I was doing bones from Star Trek. Probably not worth going back for. Probably not. Dr. Burton, is that you? Hey, Mr. Severson, how are you? You remember my friend, Ed? Of course. Hey, Mr. Severson, good to see you. So, the market for a horse? We are, as a matter of fact. Look no farther. Well, really? This right here? She's special. In fact, a little effort, she could be ready to run this week. This week? Wow, that, that, that'd be fantastic. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Severson. OK, take care, Mr. Severson. Did you hear that? Yeah. We should ask him what a hawk is. Forget hawks. We, we got ourselves a horse. Yeah, as long as nobody outbids us. Miss Jenny Fair, Miss Jenny Fair. Wait a minute, hold it. I know you're not going there selling them three itty bitty pies. Not after you told me you only sell them in what? Increments of 100? I make exceptions for some of my preferred customers. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Little dig, little dig. I know. You're just trying to say, oh, Eli's not a preferred customer. I know. What can I do for you, Eli? You could take back those pies you sold me. Now, why in the world would I want to do that? Because they all went bad. 
Of course they went bad. They're pies, Eli. Pies don't last forever. Yeah, but you sold me a hundred pies. You told me freeze them, throw them, sell them. As long as you do it by the expiration date. Hey, wait, 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 hold up. Expiration date? You didn't say anything about no expiration date. It's right there, on every box. Okay, I'll tell you what. You got two choices. One, you take back the pies, or two, you face the unmitigated wrath of Eli Cartwright Goggins III. I'm sorry. A competent salesman would have had those pies sold by now. Okay, get ready to face the unmitigated wrath of Eli Cartwright Goggins III, Chody. Wait, did you hear what I said? Yo, you about to face some wrath. You, you want, it's some serious wrath. Some serious wrath. My first guest tonight is one of the most inventive and hilarious performers in recent memory. Good tonight, God. How did this guy get his own show? Oh, I think he's funny. Tonight, the incomparable Mr. Tom Green. The incomparable Mr. Tom Green. Because I've put so much into this, I have not had time to do most ordinary things. Well, ordinary things? Like kissing a girl. <laughs> It's a shtick. Well, it's good shtick. It's not like I've got uh, a lot of offers for dates and things. <laughs> oh, he's so lame. Now, if he could do this, imagine what I could do. take for us, Tom? Remember this night, Mark. This is the night that I warned Cheswick she'll dare to dream. Okay, what are you babbling about? Miss Bessie said I could accomplish anything I put my mind to. She's absolutely right. This can't be going anyplace good. Warren! You missed my SAT prep class. You're a genius. Oh, what? Ah, Michael Esney has shown me my destiny. Oh, you saw it. I'm glad. I am going to be the voice of my generation. It's quite some destiny. <laughs> and it's less daunting if I take it in five-year chunks. So first I get my own talk show, then, you know, work on my stand-up act, take a few film roles, of course. And then I'm going to have to form my own production company so I can develop my own material, then introduce my own perfume line, and uh, soon I'm a personality. Sounds like you're going to be a very busy young man. Still expect to see you at my next SAT prep class. Am I going to retake the SATs? Why not? Why in the world would I do that? I don't know. Maybe because you want to get into a better college. That puts me four years behind schedule. I'm not going to college. <laughs> Come here, you. Oh. <laughs> I really want this horse, Mike. 100% with you, buddy. But there also has to be a limit on what we're willing to spend. Right. So give me a number. Mm, 3,000. I mean, you can't buy a horse for $3,000. All right, 3,500. 3,500. These are thoroughbred race horses, Mike. Well, what then, 4,000? Well, 4,000. You delirious, 4,000 dollars will be laughed out of the auction. How much do you want to spend, Ed? 4,500. All right, not a penny more. Agreed. Uh, Which store are you for the hat? 2795. No way. Going once. 8,000 going twice. Sold to this young lady for $8,000, buyer number 10. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next lot number is lot number four. Two-year-old, beautiful fish. There she is, Mike. And That's a horse. She is gorgeous. Yeah, I really think I should be the one controlling the paddle. Why? All right, how much? I'm a doctor. Let's start at $5,000. I have a bit of $5,000 now. 5000 dollars 55 55 55 I have there. 55 and $6,000 there. $6,000, I have 6500 now. 6500 give me the 7 7 I got $7,000 there. $7,000 now, give me the 75 I got $75 for a man and a quarter, right? 75 give me the 8 give me the 8 give me the 8 I got 75 now. 8000 I have now, give me 85 85 85 85 I have a man and a quarter, right? 9000 Michael, I think we should go to 10000 What, are you crazy? Uh, no, I'm asking you to give me authorization to bid. No. No, authorize me. No. Authorize, yeah. Give me $10,000. I got $10,000 in the back. Thank you, new bidder. Ten Thousand. Yeah. 10,000, give me the 10.5, give me the 10.5, I have 10,000, I have 10.5 men in the quarter. Bastards, why didn't the press leave Jacko alone? They act like it's a crime to be different. Hey, Bob Severinsen's leaving town. You changing the subject? I'm trying. It's a bright, shiny diamond of a world out there, Ed. Wouldn't hurt us to consider a facet outside our own community every once in a while. Jacko, that's a facet you're going to consider? Small facet, granted, but a be fascinating one nonetheless. Hey. Says here Severinsen's gonna sell his horses. Jacko likes horses. He even has his own zoo. Race horses. Don't tell me you forgot the dream. Dream many dreams, Ed. The dream we've shared since that crisp bottom day when our fathers first took it to the Jasper Park racetrack to see our very first horse race. Still fuzzy. The dream, Mike. The dream of owning a racehorse. The dream of getting our picture taken in the winter circle with a bottle of champagne and a wreath of flowers around our neck. Oh yeah, I forgot all about that dream. Horse races, Mike. 
Horse racing, the sport of kings. Actually, pro is the sport of kings. This is tennis. Oh, boy. Hold on, we don't have much time here. It says they're going to auction the horses tomorrow. Are you really, really serious about this? Absolutely, I'm serious. Chance to live the dream, my friend. I got a horse right here. The name is Paul Revere. Come on, Mike. No, thank you. And here's a guy that says, if the weather's clear, you gonna leave me hanging here? You're comfortable leaving me hanging here? Can do. Can do. Can do. Surely, oh, listen, if anyone calls, it's going to be busy for a while. i got to see a man about a horse. You'll find them sparkling clean. Sanitized for your protection. What? Bathroom. What? Hmm? Oh, no, no, surely, I don't have to, I mean, I'm not, I, I quite literally need to see a man about a horse. Shall I slip the phone messages under the door? That'd be very nice, thank you. One more time. Tell me I'm not doing something stupid here. Do I get to be in the winner's circle with you when you win? Holding the champagne. Then you're not doing anything stupid. Thanks. Come on, I'll drop you at school. It's just a number. Well, two numbers, verbal and math, adding up to one. Can we please talk about something else? That bad, huh? Thank you, Shirley. It's not my fault. SATs are culturally biased. Everyone knows that. Yeah, in your favor. Road rallies to cars regarded as 